Okay, model number three, subscriptions. Um, two really big uh, subscription sites that I'm sure you've heard of. One that we're going to study in depth a little bit later, World of Warcraft, and also Netflix. Making money by charging you a monthly fee. This is a very, very, very nice model for companies who do it. Um, a company like Netflix knows exactly how much money they're going to make. iTunes really does not know how much money they're going to make because they don't know how many people are going to buy. They don't know if all of a sudden a lot of people are going to decide that they don't like Netflix. Uh, they don't like iTunes anymore and switch to something else and iTunes all of a sudden makes no money. Netflix on the other hand, they know every month you're going to pay them a certain amount of money. It's a very nice business model for that reason. It's a way that uh, that they can be sure how big how big they are, how much money they're going to have, and uh, and what the economics are, how much how much money they can put into their company versus how much money they're going to get back out. So subscriptions, where you pay a certain amount of money per month, and the company gives you well whatever it is they give you, they give you services. Um, there are subscription models for music as well as you're well aware of. So the iTunes model of selling music by the piece, one song at a time, is not the only model. There are other models out there. Um, Rhapsody, for example, where you pay a certain amount per month and you get a certain amount of music per month and hopefully it's unlimited. Okay, so the subscription model, pay a single price and get some service. It works on the World of Warcraft as well. Warcraft is, a, is actually a, a very interesting example because they started off in that old world. I don't know if you've been playing Warcraft for a long time, but it used to be that you would buy a disc, you know, $35, $40, whatever it was, and you had uh, Warcraft forever and you could continue playing it forever. Well, they successfully managed to go to a subscription model on top of that. So not only do you pay for the original bits, the original program, but you now pay per month to use Warcraft. And people are happily plunking down their monthly fees, their subscription fees. So uh, Blizzard gets a great deal out of that. Not only do they get you to pay for the original product, and by the way, selling you a CD with a bunch of programs on it costs them almost nothing. It costs them the, you know, whatever, whatever the printing cost of the CD is. And so the $35 or $40 that you pay for that program um, is almost pure profit and then they sell the service they sell the service of providing the servers providing the ongoing updates to the software providing whatever help they give you which is minimal um, and you pay a, mo a monthly fee now another interesting uh, example of this is uh, news media news media used to be subscription based Now I told you before that they're mostly advertising based and that's true they make their money from advertising now as they always have the newspapers are a way to get you to read the advertisements in between the stories um, but now the print media is trying to do what, um, what uh, Steve Jobs did for the music industry, which is try to figure out how to get you to subscribe for information. That's a really big one. When we've got that one figured out, we'll be in a very different world than we are now. We've been in a world where information has been given away in return for your attention for many, many, many years. Now will I pay, actually, to have uh, information delivered to me on the web? Well, I think the, the key question is, what's so much better about this information I pay for than the information I could get for free on the web. So either all information is going to move towards a monetization uh, model where you're paying for information, that's actually the one that I would prefer, frankly, and charge just a very, very little bit, pennies or even sub-pennies for information, um, or is a service like the New York Times, The Economist, somebody like that, going to provide such high quality information that you're willing to pay so much more for it, or you're willing to pay something for it when you could get the equivalent for free.